Section 1.2, Medical Documentation. Requirements. Starting January 30, 2012 and no later than January 30, 2014, if you are applying for a CDL permit, or are renewing, upgrading, adding endorsements to a CDL, or transferring a CDL from another state, you are required to provide information to your state driver's license agency, STLA, regarding the type of commercial motor vehicle operation you drive in or expect to drive in with your CDL. Drivers operating in certain types of commerce will be required to submit a current medical examiner certificate and or any medical variance documents that you have been issued, i.e. vision, skills performance or diabetic waivers, or other exemptions, to your SDLA to obtain a certified medical status as part of your driving record. You must contact your state driver licensing agency, SDLA, to obtain information regarding the requirement for submitting these documents. If you are required to have a certified medical status and fail to provide and keep up to date your medical examiner certificate you become not certified and may lose your CDL. For the purpose of complying with the new requirements for medical certification, it is important to know how you are using the CMV. The following information will help you decide how to self-certify. 1.2.1 Interstate or Intrastate Commerce do you or will you use a CDL to operate a CMV in interstate or interstate commerce? Interstate commerce is when you drive a CMV from one state to another state or a foreign country between two places within a state, but during part of the trip, the CMV crosses into another state or foreign country or between two places within a state, but the cargo or passengers are part of a trip that began or will end in another state or foreign country. Interstate commerce is when you drive a CMV within a state and you do not meet any of the descriptions above for interstate commerce. If you operate in both interstate commerce and interstate commerce, you must choose interstate commerce. 1.2.2, inter slash interstate commerce. Status. Not accepted or accepted. Once you decide whether you will operate in interstate commerce or interstate commerce, you must decide whether you will operate or expect to operate in a non-accepted or accepted status. This decision will tell you to which of the four types of commerce you must self-certify. Interstate Commerce You operate in accepted interstate commerce when you drive a CMV in interstate commerce only for the following accepted activities. To transport school children and or school staff between home and school, as federal, state or local government employees, to transport human corpses or sick or injured persons, fire truck or rescue vehicle drivers during emergencies and other related activities, primarily in the transportation of propane winter heating fuel when responding to an emergency condition requiring immediate response such as damage to a propane gas system after a storm or flooding, in response to a pipeline emergency condition requiring immediate response such as a pipeline leak or rupture, in custom harvesting on a farm or to transport farm machinery and supplies used in the custom harvesting operation to and from a farm or to transport custom harvested crops to storage or market, beekeeper in the seasonal transportation of bees, controlled and operated by a farmer, but is not a combination vehicle, power unit and towed unit, and is used to transport agricultural products, farm machinery or farm supplies, no placardable hazardous materials, to and from a farm and within 150 air miles of the farm, as a private motor carrier of passengers for non-business purposes, or to transport migrant workers. If you answered yes to one or more of the above activities as the only operation in which you drive, you operate in accepted interstate commerce and do not need a federal medical examiner certificate. If you answered no to all of the above activities, you operate in non-accepted interstate commerce and are required to provide a current medical examiner certificate, 49 CFR 391.45, commonly referred to as a medical certificate or dot card, to your state driver licensing agency, SDLA. Most CDL holders who drive CMVs in interstate commerce are non-accepted interstate commerce drivers. If you operate in both accepted interstate commerce and non-accepted interstate commerce, you must choose non-accepted interstate commerce to be qualified to operate in both types of interstate commerce. Interstate commerce. You operate in accepted interstate commerce when you drive a CMV only in interstate commerce activities for which your state of licensure has determined do not require you to meet the state's medical certification requirements. Contact your SDLA about their requirements. 
You operate in non-accepted intrastate commerce when you drive a CMV only in intrastate commerce and are required to meet your state of licensure's medical certification requirements, contact your SDLA about their requirements. If you operate in both accepted intrastate commerce and non-accepted intrastate commerce, you must choose non-accepted intrastate commerce. 1.2.3 Self-Certification Statements When completing an application for your CDL, you will be required to check the box next to the statement that describes your status. The actual statements on your application may vary from those shown below. Interstate non-accepted. I certify that I operate or expect to operate in interstate commerce, that I am subject to and meet the federal medical card requirements under 49 CFR Part 391, and that I am required to obtain a medical examiner certificate. Interstate accepted. I certify that I operate or expect to operate in interstate commerce, but engage exclusively in transportation or operations accepted under 49 CFR sections 390.3F, 391.2, 391.68 or 398.3 from all or parts of the qualification requirements of 49 CFR Part 391, and that I am not required to obtain a medical examiner certificate. Interstate non-accepted. I certify that operate or expect to operate entirely in interstate commerce, that I am subject to and meet the medical requirements for my state, and that I am required to obtain a medical examiner certificate. Interstate accepted. I certify that I operate or expect to operate entirely in interstate commerce, that I am not subject to the medical requirements for my state, and that I am not required to obtain a medical examiner certificate. 1.3 CDL disqualifications. 1.3.1 1.3.1 General. You may not drive a commercial motor vehicle if you are disqualified for any reason. 1.3.2 Alcohol, leaving the scene of an accident and commission of a felony. It is illegal to operate a CMV if your blood alcohol concentration, BAC, is 0.04% or more. If you operate a CMV, you shall be deemed to have given your consent to alcohol testing. You will lose your CDL for at least one year for a first offense for. Driving a CMV if your blood alcohol concentration is 0.04% or higher. Driving a CMV under the influence of alcohol. Refusing to undergo blood alcohol testing. Driving a CMV while under the influence of a controlled substance. Leaving the scene of an accident involving a CMV. Committing a felony involving the use of a CMV. Driving a CMV when the CDL is suspended causing a fatality through negligent operation of a CMV. You will lose your CDL for at least three years if the offense occurs while you are operating a CMV that is placarded for hazardous materials. You will lose your CDL for life for a second offense. You will lose your CDL for life if you use a CMV to commit a felony involving controlled substances. You will be put out of service for 24 hours if you have any detectable amount of alcohol under 0.04%. 1.3.3 Serious Traffic Violations Serious traffic violations are excessive speeding, 15 miles per hour or more above the posted limit, reckless driving, improper or erratic lane changes, following a vehicle too closely, traffic offenses committed in a CMV in connection with fatal traffic accidents, driving a CMV without obtaining a CDL or having a CDL in the driver's possession and driving a CMV without the proper class of CDL and or endorsements. You will lose your CDL. For at least 60 days if you have committed two serious traffic violations within a three-year period involving a CMV. For at least 120 days for three or more serious traffic violations within a three-year period involving a CMV. 1.3.4 Violation of out-of-service orders. You will lose your CDL. For at least 90 days if you have committed your first violation of an out-of-service order. For at least one year if you have committed two violations of an out-of-service order in a 10-year period. For at least three years if you have committed three or more violations of an out-of-service order in a 10-year period. 1.3.5 Railroad Highway Grade Crossing Violations You will lose your CDL. For at least 60 days for your first violation for at least 120 days for your second violation within a three-year period, for at least one year for your third violation within a three-year period. These violations include violation of a federal, 
state or local law or regulation pertaining to one of the following six offenses at a railroad highway grade crossing. For drivers who are not required to always stop, failing to stop before reaching the crossing if the tracks are not clear. For drivers who are not required to always stop, failing to slow down and check that the tracks are clear of an approaching train. For drivers who are always required to stop, failing to stop before driving onto the crossing. For all drivers failing to have sufficient space to drive completely through the crossing without stopping. For all drivers failing to obey a traffic control device or the directions of an enforcement official at the crossing. For all drivers failing to negotiate a crossing because of insufficient undercarriage clearance. 1.3.6 Hazardous Materials Endorsement Background Check and Disqualifications If you require a hazardous materials endorsement you will be required to submit your fingerprints and be subject to a background check. You will be denied or you will lose your hazardous materials endorsement if you are not a lawful permanent resident of the United States. Renounce your United States citizenship. Are wanted or under indictment for certain felonies. Have a conviction in military or civilian court for certain felonies have been adjudicated as lacking mental capacity or have been involuntarily committed to a mental health facility as specified in Section 1572.109. Are considered to pose a security threat as determined by the Transportation Security Administration. The background check procedures vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Your licensing agency will provide you with all the information you need to complete the required TSA background check procedures. 1.3.7 1.3.7 Traffic Violations in Your Personal Vehicle The Motor Carrier Safety Improvement Act of 1999 requires a CDL holder to be disqualified from operating a commercial motor vehicle if the CDL holder has been convicted of certain types of moving violations in their personal vehicle. If your privilege to operate your personal vehicle is revoked, cancelled, or suspended due to violations of traffic control laws, other than parking violations, you will also lose your CDL driving privileges. If your privilege to operate your personal vehicle is revoked, cancelled, or suspended due to alcohol, controlled substance or felony violations, you will lose your CDL for one year. If you are convicted of a second violation in your personal vehicle or CMV you will lose your CDL for life. If your license to operate your personal vehicle is revoked, cancelled, or suspended you may not obtain a hardship license to operate a CMV. 1.4 Other CDL Rules There are other federal and state rules that affect drivers operating CMVs in all states. Among them are You cannot have more than one license. If you break this rule, a court may fine you up to $5,000 or put you in jail and keep your home state license and return any others. You must notify your employer within 30 days of conviction for any traffic violations, except parking. This is true no matter what type of vehicle you are driving. You must notify your motor vehicle licensing agency within 30 days if you are convicted in any other jurisdiction of any traffic violation, except parking. This is true no matter what type of vehicle you are driving. You must notify your employer within two business days if your license is suspended, revoked, or cancelled, or if you are disqualified from driving. You must give your employer information on all driving jobs you have held for the past 10 years. You must do this when you apply for a commercial driving job. No one can drive a commercial motor vehicle without a CDL. A court may fine you up to $5,000 or put you in jail for breaking this rule. If you have a hazardous materials endorsement you must notify and surrender your hazardous materials endorsement to the state that issued your CDL within 24 hours of any conviction or indictment in any jurisdiction, civilian or military, for, or found not guilty by reason of insanity of a disqualifying crime listed in 49 CFR 1572.103 who is adjudicated as lacking mental capacity or have been involuntarily committed to a mental institution as specified in 49 CFR 1572.109, or who renounces his or her you. As citizenship, your employer may not let you drive a commercial motor vehicle if you have more than one license or if your CDL is suspended or revoked. A court may fine the employer up to $5,000 or put him slash her in jail for breaking this rule. All states are connected to one computerized system to share information about CDL drivers. 
The states will check on drivers' accident records to be sure that drivers do not have more than one CDL. You are not allowed to hold a mobile telephone to conduct a voice communication or dial a mobile telephone by pressing more than a single button when driving. You are not allowed to send or read text messages while driving. You must be properly restrained by a safety belt at all times while operating a commercial motor vehicle. The safety belt design holds the driver securely behind the wheel during a crash, helping the driver to control the vehicle and reduces the chance of serious injury or death. If you do not wear a safety belt, you are four times more likely to be fatally injured if you are thrown from the vehicle. Your state may have additional rules that you must also obey. 1.5 International Registration Plan International Fuel Tax Agreement If you operate a CDL-required vehicle in interstate commerce, the vehicle, with few exceptions, is required to be registered under the International Registration Plan, IRP, and the International Fuel Tax Agreement, IFTA. These federally mandated programs provide for the equitable collection and distribution of vehicle license fees and motor fuels taxes for vehicles traveling throughout the 48 contiguous United States and 10 Canadian provinces. Under the IRP, jurisdictions must register apportioned vehicles which includes issuing license plates and cab cards or proper credentials, calculate, collect and distribute IRP fees, audit carriers for accuracy of reported distance and fees and enforce IRP requirements. Registrant responsibilities under the plan include applying for IRP registration with base jurisdiction, providing proper documentation for registration, paying appropriate IRP registration fees, properly displaying registration credentials, maintaining accurate distance records, and making records available for jurisdiction review. The basic concept behind IFTA is to allow all licensee, motor carrier, to license in a base jurisdiction for the reporting and payment of motor fuel use taxes. Under the IFTA, a licensee is issued one set of credentials which will authorize operations through all IFTA member jurisdictions. The fuel use taxes collected pursuant to the IFTA are calculated based on the number of miles, kilometers, traveled and the number of gallons liters, consumed in the member jurisdictions. The licensee files one quarterly tax return with the base jurisdiction by which the licensee will report all operations through all IFTA member jurisdictions. It is the base jurisdiction's responsibility to remit the taxes collected to other member jurisdictions and to represent the other member jurisdictions in the tax collection process, including the performance of audits. An IFTA licensee must retain records to support the information reported on the IFTA quarterly tax return. The IRP registrant and the IFTA licensee may be the vehicle owner or the vehicle operator. The requirement for acquiring IRP plates for a vehicle and if the license for a motor carrier is determined by the definitions from the IRP plan and if to for qualified vehicle and qualified motor. Vehicle, for purposes of IRP, a qualified vehicle is, except as provided below, any power unit that is used or intended for use in two or more member jurisdictions, and that is used for the transportation of persons for hire or designed, used, or maintained primarily for the transportation of property, and has two axles and a gross vehicle weight or registered gross vehicle weight in excess of 26,000 pounds, 11,793.401 kilograms, or has three or more axles, regardless of weight, or is used in combination, when the gross vehicle weight of such combination exceeds 26,000 pounds, 11,793.401 kilograms. While similar, the qualified motor vehicle in IFTA means a motor vehicle used, designed, or maintained for transportation of persons or property and 1. Having two axles and a gross vehicle weight or registered gross vehicle weight exceeding 26,000 pounds or 11,797 kilograms, or 2. Is used in combination, when the weight of such combination exceeds 26,000 pounds or 11,797 kilograms gross vehicle or registered gross vehicle weight. Qualified motor vehicle does not include recreational vehicles. If the vehicle you operate is registered under IRP and you are a motor carrier licensed under IFTA, then you are required to comply with the mandatory record keeping requirements for operating the vehicle. A universally accepted method of capturing this information is through the completion of an individual vehicle distance record, IVDR, sometimes times referred to as a driver trip report. 
This document reflects the distance traveled and fuel purchased for a vehicle that operates interstate under a portion, IRP, registration and IFTA fuel tax credentials. Although the actual format of the IVDR may vary, the information that is required for proper record keeping does not. In order to satisfy the requirements for individual vehicle distance records, these documents must include the following information. Distance Per Article 4 of the IRP Plan Date of trip, starting and ending Trip origin and destination, city and state Or province Routes of travel Beginning and ending odometer or hubometer reading of the trip Total distance traveled in jurisdiction distance, power unit number or vehicle identification number, fuel, per section P560 of the IFTA procedures manual, point three zero zero an acceptable receipt or invoice must include, but shall not be limited to, the following, point zero zero five date of purchase, point zero one zero seller's name and address, point zero one five number of gallons or liters purchased. 0.020 fuel type. 0.025 price per gallon or liter or total amount of sale. 0.030 unit number or other unique vehicle. Identifier. 0.035 purchaser's name. An example of an IVDR that must be completed in its entirety for each trip can be found in figure 1 below. Each individual IVDR should be filled out for only one vehicle. The rules to follow when trying to determine how and when to log an odometer reading are the following. At the beginning of the day. When leaving the state or province. At the end of the trip slash day. Not only do the trips need to be logged, but the fuel purchases need to be documented as well. You must obtain a receipt for all fueling and include it with your completed IVDR. Make sure that any trips that you enter are always filled out in descending order and that your trips include all state-slash-provinces that you traveled through on your route. There are different routes that a driver may take, and most of the miles may be within one state or province. Whether or not the distance you travel is primarily in one jurisdiction or spread among several jurisdictions, all information for the trip must be recorded. This includes the dates, the routes, odometer readings and fuel purchases. By completing this document in full and keeping all records required by both the IRP and the IFTA, you will have ensured that you and your company are in compliance with all state and provincial laws surrounding fuel and distance record keeping requirements. The IVDR serves as the source document for the calculation of fees and taxes that are payable to the jurisdictions in which the vehicle is operated, so these original records must be maintained for a minimum of four years. In addition, these records are subject to audit by the taxing jurisdictions. Failure to maintain complete and accurate records could result in fines, penalties and suspension or revocation of IRP registrations and IFTA licenses. For additional information on the IRP and the requirements related to the IRP, contact your base jurisdiction motor vehicle department or IRP Incorporated, the official repository for the IRP. Additional information can be found on the IRP Incorporated website at www.erponline.org. There is a training video on the website homepage available in English, Spanish, and French. For additional information on IFTA and the requirements related to IFTA, contact the appropriate agency in your base jurisdiction. You will also find useful information about the agreement at the official repository of IFTA at http colon slash slash www.iftac.org slash index.php